Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this video we'll be making a low poly barrel. This is aimed at beginners. There'll also be a later video where I take the low poly model and sculpt it, so look out for that in the near future. If you like what I do then check out my other playlists on this channel and my website for more great content like this. And also this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yes, I've got some sponsorship, which is nice, and it's very helpful to keep the channel running and keep me making content. Skillshare have kindly given me access to their online learning, and I've enjoyed the chance to take a look and try it out. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes particularly suited to creators. They've got a lot of categories that will probably interest you, such as animation and 3D art, as well as learning about things like freelancing and entrepreneurship. I've actually been looking at the SEO and business related learning and I've really enjoyed it. I've also taken a look at the 3D modeling section. And one thing I noticed straight away was that Remington Markham is on here. You might know him as Southern Shotty. He's a really inspirational teacher and you can get access to his content right here. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. When you join, you can also try one of Skillshare's live classes. So experiencing real-time inspiration as you connect with teachers whilst watching and working along with other members. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a one month free trial. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so I'm in Blender 2.93, as you can see down the bottom there, but this tutorial will be useful for Blender 2.8 and beyond and future versions such as 3.0. Also, although this is a beginner tutorial, I am expecting some understanding of the interface, so it's not for complete beginners. If you are a complete beginner, then I recommend starting with my complete beginner's guide. Again, check the playlist on this channel and links in the description for that. Also to help you, I've got my screencast keys down the bottom here, so if I click a button, you can see it there. So let's start by selecting the default cube and deleting it. I'll press Shift A to add. You can also find that under the add menu here, mesh, and we're going to go for cylinder. And we can change the parameters of our cylinder down the bottom left here. Now 32 is a bit too much for low poly work. I prefer 16 for my barrel. I always choose something that's divisible by four, then I can cut it into quarters with mirrors if I want to. We won't actually be doing that in this case, but it's just helpful. Now, as soon as I start editing this, I won't be able to change these parameters, so make sure you're happy with them. So I'll go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard, or you can press edit mode up here. And let's zoom into my object a bit with period key on my numpad. And that command is frame selected. You can find that up here. So first of all, I'm gonna add a loop cut around the middle here. So control R and then move your mouse to that middle point there. Then use your wheel to create two. This is gonna be the starting point for my metal brackets. So left click to set those and you can move them up or down, but I want to keep them there. So right click to cancel any movement. And that's what we've got so far. Now I want to be in edge mode for this. So two to go to edge mode, or you can select edges up here. And I want these two edges here and here. To select them like that, you press Alt left click and that selects an edge loop and Shift Alt left click will select the other one. Now I can scale these out to create a barrel shape. So probably somewhere around there. But also I'm going to press Control B to bevel and that will bring out these two edge loops like this and they'll be our sort of metal braces that go around the middle. Now with the bevel command, you can also use your wheel to add in more loop cuts, but I only want two. We're keeping it nice and chunky for our low poly look. So around about there looks good. I can left click to set those. Now at this point, we've got a decision to make and that's whether we want our brackets going around the outside to be a separate object, which is better for sculpting later on. Or if you're just going to keep it as a low poly object, you'll just extrude these shapes outwards and it will all be one shape. So I'm going to do two different barrels, one if you're hoping to sculpt this later on, and one if you just want it to be, let's say, a low poly game object or maybe something you print out, that will be the other one. So I'll go back into object mode with tab, zoom out just a touch and shift D to duplicate. So that creates a duplicate. I can then press X to move that duplication across the X axis like that. So we've got two barrels. On the first one, I'll go into edit mode. This is just going to be our simple low poly. And we would take these brackets going around the outside, press E to extrude, and that sort of pulls out a new shape, which looks rather odd. We can then scale that so it comes out like this. But we don't want to scale it in the Z axis because they're getting wider. The Z axis is the axis going up and down. So I can press Shift Z and it won't scale in the Z axis. So I can just bring this out to here. So they're nice and chunky, that low poly style out to around there, that looks great. So E to extrude, S to scale, 
and remember shift Z so it doesn't scale them in the Z axis as well. So slightly different for sculpting. So if I come into object mode and then select on the next one and go into edit mode with tab, I would actually duplicate these. So shift D to duplicate the faces and left click. So they're right on top of each other at the moment and then P to separate by selection. That way I've now got two objects, the brackets and the barrel. So I can tab into object mode and I can select my new brackets into edit mode, select all with A. You've also got that on the select menu here, select all. And the same process again, so E to extrude, S to scale, and then shift Z so it doesn't go up or down and out to around there. So we've got two barrels that look identical, but one is a little bit easier to sculpt with because we can sculpt the barrel separately and, and do our sort of grains down the barrel like this without worrying about editing the metal brackets and then go to the metal brackets and start sculpting those. So it's helpful for sculpting to have two separate objects. So again, if you plan to do sculpting, then have them as separate objects. And remember the command for separate is P. Okay, so I'm going to go back into object mode and I'll hide the first one. So H for hide, and I'll just work on this one that I'm going to sculpt later on. But there shouldn't be any differences now, except the fact that I'm going to have to jump between the two objects if I want to edit them. If you're doing the low poly version, you just work on the same one. Okay, so I'll select the barrel and start editing that. So into edit mode. If you want to make your life simple, you can do a cut down the middle and mirror it from top to bottom. I like to add a bit of variation so make it slightly different from top to bottom. That way, if I want to repeat it, I can turn it upside down and it will look slightly different. So I'm into edit mode. I'm going to go to face mode with three and select the top and the bottom faces. And I'm going to press I for inset. So inset is the same as if you were to extrude and then scale. So it creates a new face inside like this. If I pull my mouse in and out like this, probably somewhere around there. And the same should happen on the top as well. And if I press extrude again, and left click, we've got an extrusion here and here. I can then press S to scale in the Z axis and that will bring them inwards like this. So that brings them in together and we've got the top of our barrel like that. We've got some nice chunky wood and a nice chunky barrel. Okay, so for the most part, that's a nice low poly barrel. I like to add a few interesting elements to it, so notches and things like that. And to do that, I go to edge mode with two, select an edge, and I'll press Control B to bevel that, so that will split this into two edges like this. And you can see how it's created this sort of triangular thing. We can press Delete over that and delete faces. So that creates this gap like this, this hole. Really easy to fill. You go to Edge Mode with two, select an edge like this and press F to fill and F to fill again. Now much earlier versions of Blender, if I undo that, you actually have to select each side and press F to fill and the same here, so one there and one there. But if I undo that, later versions, it's just F to fill once you've got an edge and it knows to fill those sections in. So I'll create another one over here, Control B to bevel, and I'll bring it down a little bit smaller this time so it looks a little bit different. Delete those faces, select one of the edges, F to fill and F to fill. It's got a couple of notches there that look nice. Same on the bottom. I'll just speed this process up. Try and be fairly random with which ones you pick. Okay, so we've got a couple of notches. And also to add a bit of variation, it's nice to just grab a couple of edges and press G to grab and maybe in the Z, just to sort of undulate the top slightly. G then Z, and it gives it a bit more of an organic look. You can even select a couple of faces and extrude them up slightly. Just make sure they are actually going in line with the edge like that. So I've just moved them slightly and maybe into edge mode and just move this one down. So G then Z. And that looks a bit like a plank that's sticking out slightly. So same for the bottom, a little bit of undulation, G to grab in the Z. I'm holding down shift because then it will move in smaller increments. Maybe this time I'll grab a face and press G then Z and move that out slightly. And just that little bit of variation goes a long way. And we're pretty much there. I like to also, on my brackets going around, you can add some dents. So grab a vertex this time and Control Shift B will bevel a vertex like this. Now, can you see I'm going quite far here and that looks like quite a big dink. And one is meeting the other there. 
Now I would be very careful of making them touch like that, so undo those steps and press Control Shift B and bring it out just before you get to there. You can always extend these by pressing GG to edge slide, so G twice, and move them out like this. And often it helps to select these two and press J to join, and then you've got that sort of notch in there which looks quite nice and like it's been bashed a little. You can also add a bit of undulation to this, so if I select these two here for example and G then Z, move that down. If they're a combined object then they'll move together and that's fine. In this case they're separate objects for sculpting, so we'll see the object in the back side there. It won't make too much difference because you won't be moving it very far. So I'll just create a little bit of undulation going around here. and maybe another bash bit as well, so select one more vert and Control shift b is to bevel a vertex instead of an edge. Control b doesn't work on a vertex. I'll select these two here and press J to join and that sort of fills in an edge between them and GG to edge slide this one along. So sort of an interesting dink there. Okay, so we've got a base shape for our barrel, a little bit of texturing now, so across the shading tab here, I'll zoom in on my object with period key on my numpad now this is slightly different between the two, so texturing your barrel that isn't two separate objects will be slightly different, but I'll show you how to do that in a second. Select my base barrel, create a new texture, and I'll call this wood. So we can change the material name in here. Zoom out just a touch, change the base color here of my principled BSDF, and brown is down here in this direction. It looks orange at the moment, but as soon as you make it a little bit darker in tone, it starts going more towards brown. It's a bit red at the moment I would say, so we'll bring it over this way slightly, maybe a touch darker. And I always find that for low poly work a bit more roughness looks a little bit better. And that's quite nice, a little bit saturated at the moment, so if I go to the colour again, saturation is towards the outside of the circle. Let's zoom in on that just a touch. And the further in I go, the less saturated. Maybe a little bit more towards the yellows, perhaps somewhere around there. It depends what sort of barrel colour you want, but I think somewhere around there looks quite nice. Then for our metal brackets, we can press new, I'll call this metal. Now you can actually have a metallic texture by bringing the metallic all the way up, and that's kind of working. Probably want to make the base colour a little bit darker, depending on your preference. Maybe somewhere around here. And there we've got a reasonably good looking low poly barrel. I'll quickly show you the texturing for the other one. So I'll press Alt H to unhide or make visible my hidden objects and I'll quickly make some edits to that so it mimics this one. Okay so I've quickly done that, I actually copied this one and joined them back together. So we've got the same edits. So if I want to take the brown colour from here and put it on here, with this object selected I can come down to the drop down here and select my wood. However it's adding it to the whole object. What I need to do is create a separate slot here. So click on the down arrow here, create a new slot and in slot 2 now I'm going to give that the metal material. So nothing's changed at the moment because I need to tell Blender that I want my brackets to look at this slot 2 texture. To do that I go into edit mode, select faces with 3 and you can also select a face loop in Blender so if I press alt left click on an edge going across the face loop that I want, you must be in face mode for this to work, so an edge going across the face you want, I'll shift alt left click on this one and I can select those faces. If I press Control plus on my numpad that will add to my selection. So if I go up to the select menu that's select more, so Control numpad plus. Now with those selected I can come down to here where it says slot 2 and then press assign with that metal slot 2 selected, so assign and there we've got that being metal if I just go to object mode and the rest of it being brown. Let's add a floor for it to render on, so Shift A to add, Mesh Plane, scale that up. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad and move it down to underneath the barrels like this. There we go, give that a darker colour I think. So new material, floor, give that a sort of woody colour as well. And to make it look a little bit better, first of all we'll go into the render settings and add some ambient occlusion. That gives it some natural shadows, a bit of screen space reflections as well, that will help the metal as well, as you can see there. And if you want to learn a bit about lighting and making these look even better, then check out my video on how to make your renders look nice. I'll put a link to that also in the description. So hopefully you enjoyed that. 
Look out for the next video about sculpting, where we'll take this and turn it into this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.